abruptly ended a foreign tour as criticism grows of a brutal crackdown on protests at home. He was meant to join world leaders in Davos, Switzerland. This follows his stop in Russia last week. Protests erupted in Zimbabwe a week ago following the announcement of a 150% fuel hike on the eve of the president's departure. At least 12 people have since been killed and 78 treated for gunshot wounds. The fuel hike is the latest blow to citizens already struggling to buy basic commodities. Inflation is running at 40%, its highest rate in 10 years. You know, the government of Zimbabwe has for the first time admitted that it is behind the internet shutdown in the country. The admission was made by the spokesperson for President Emerson Munangagwa, George Charamba. For more on what's happening on the ground, we now joined by our correspondent in Zimbabwe, Efid Musikiwa. Efid, thank you very much, as always, for your time. What has been the response from uh, the citizens there, Efid, since government has, well, indeed admitted it was behind the internet shutdown? Well, a lot of people, you know, since the Internet has been blocked, they have been complaining that uh, the government is, is just descending too much. Um, they are interfering in, in uh, areas where they should not uh, interfere. Things like uh, the blockage of the Internet is actually stopping people from communicating. It's actually, you know, making life very difficult for people to get information, people to communicate with their relatives. Uh, so really people have been angry at the government and yesterday's admission is, uh, was also met with um, with a lot of uh, you know uh, resentment that they, 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 people already knew that it was the government so there was people were not really surprised when the admission was made by the presidential spokesperson yeah you were talking about the effects of this uh, internet shutdown what about businesses in Zimbabwe how's it affected them well, on Friday, you recall that businesses held a meeting, and they did indicate that they were actually further losing more money because of this uh, this internet shutdown. They could not uh, make payments online, mm. or they could not trade online because they had no access. So they were saying that government had actually aided in the um, in the shutdown that had been called for by the Zimbabwe Congress of Trade, in that all those businesses that had wanted to to you know operate could not operate at the end of the day because. Uh, even if they were opened, they still could not stay because there was no internet access. How does government justify its shutdown of the internet effort? Well, uh, in his um, uh, statement, uh, the presidential spokesperson said uh, they, they did uh, they shut down the internet in order to protect. Uh, innocent and ordinary citizens of Zimbabwe from the abuse that was being made on uh, social media. They say that it is actually, you know, to protect also citizens in that uh, internet was being used or social media was being used as a as a tool for terrorism, as a tool for uh, promoting violence. So he said it was actually in the best interest of the nation that they had to intervene and shut down the internet. So really, that that was his uh, that was the government's position uh, regarding that. Now, there's uh, rumors of another stay away. What's the situation on the ground currently? Yes, uh, indeed, there were calls that people also continue with the shutdown again this week. But I can confirm that I've uh, dr driven around the capital city, Harare. Uh, most schools in the center, of, uh, or most schools uh, have opened. Uh, it, uh, all the schools that have been to have actually opened. Government offices are operating. Uh, most businesses have opened door. A few here and there were still closed, waiting to see how the day is going to pan out. Mm. Uh, public transport is available. You recall that the government actually has put in place a system where conventional buses have been introduced into the central business district to carry people that would want to travel to work. And these buses have actually police uh, or police or military protection uh, on the buses. I've witnessed quite a number of those buses flying around or driving around in the city center. Uh, reportedly, Zimbabwean police have issued a stern warning to act against anyone committing crimes while wearing military or, or police uniforms. What do we know about this? Yes, indeed, it is true. The statement, the warning was issued uh, late Saturday afternoon uh, when the uh, police uh, national spokesperson, Mr. Sharamba, uh, indicated that there are increased incidences of people that are committing uh, acts of crime while wearing um, either military or police uniform. And they indicate that the, some of these uniforms were stolen during the uh, protests on Monday. 
some of these uh, uniforms, you know, uh, were actually stolen, uh, like I indicated, were stolen on Monday. So people have been using these uniforms to either terrorize people or to, you know, co commit crime. And they did warn that they they will be apprehended and uh, the law will take its course and that the, the, the security services are on high alert regarding this matter. Mm. I'm just looking at a tweet uh, by uh, President Emerson Munongagwa. He says, uh, and I quote, in light of the economic situation, I will be returning home after a highly productive week uh, of bilateral trade and investment meetings. Uh, we will be able to ably represent it in Davos by Minister of Finance, Mtuli Ngube. And the first priority is to get Zimbabwe calm, stable and working again. The President now make a U-turn uh, and agree to go back home. What has been the response? response from people on the ground uh, on his return well uh unfortunately i haven't uh you know the, the, the he made the, the announcement last yesterday evening and uh i'm still to get views of what people think or how people feel uh, on his return but what i can tell you is that with, uh, there is a bit of anxiety when you talk to people they're saying that with people a lot of people have been waiting for his return so that he make either he makes another pronouncement or he, he you know he tackles the situation that that that's uh bedeviling the country so really i i we haven't had any response or we haven't had any views from people as mm. to how they feel about his announcement that he's returning but prior to that there has been a lot of anxiety and a lot of people calling on him to return so Bob, correspondent effort musakewa thank you very much indeed as always for your reporting